Okay, so today we are going to go over Snell's Law, which is right here, um, and everything that it entails and how we go about finding um, the refraction index of various mediums and unknown angles to various mediums as well. Um, before we jump into Snell's Law and everything that it entails, the first thing that we are going to go over is what reflection and refraction are. Now reflection is when light acts as a wave, it's going to come down and hit some type of surface. Now reflection is when it simply bounces back. And if we were to draw an imaginary line right at the middle here, we would find that this angle and this angle, we're gonna call this angle one and angle two would be equal to each other. Okay, now that is, so we all remember, reflection. Okay, now refraction is when the light ray comes down and it hits some sort of medium. Now we're gonna say this is an unknown medium here, has some sort of substance in it, and we notice that it all of a sudden changes direction a little bit and then comes out going the exact same angle that it was in the first place. Okay. Now, the angles that we are worried about here, we are to go ahead and draw that same line that we did the first time, is going to be this angle, we'll call this angle one, right here. Now, Snell's law is helping us to determine what both what this angle is right here and its correlation with angle one. So we have, how does that correlate with angle two? Okay, this is Snell's law. Now, the Snell's law itself is this equation. So we have some medium in this space up here, sine that angle right there, which is angle one, as we discussed. Now this equals Whatever this medium is, we'll call that N2, and sine times that angle in there, which is angle two, okay? Now that we have this figured out and we uh, recognize what Snell's law is and um, what it entails, let's go ahead and just map out exactly what each variable is, and then we're gonna do a quick demonstration um, to represent everything that we have shown here. So as we talked about before, N1 is the medium or the refraction index number one, okay? Now the first angle here is this angle up here as we discuss. So we're gonna call that angle before medium two. Now N2 is the refraction index of this substance here, number two, okay? And then angle two, of course, is the angle light travels in medium number two. Okay, now that we have this all mapped out and we are aware of what each um, section and each part of the Snell's Law is, let's go ahead and, and put some practice onto this. Okay, so here we have a medium, right? Now in this case, we're just gonna use water here. And how we're gonna go about doing this experiment to um, find out what the refraction index of water is, we're gonna go ahead and um, determine that through this experiment. So we're gonna outline this medium here, okay? We're gonna go ahead and grab our ruler. 
and we're gonna just put it on a plane. All right, so we're gonna draw a line right down the middle, okay? Now, we're gonna set up a laser here that's gonna put a line right through this, okay? We're gonna turn off the light so we can see it a little bit better, but this laser is gonna come have to come in at a certain degree, okay? The easiest that I have found just to, to figure this out is just to have it calculated at 45 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and see right where 45 is. Okay, so we gotta line this up. 45 is right there and right there. Okay, and then we're just gonna draw a line right through it. Okay. Now this is going to be the angle at which light is going to come through right here, which is going to be angle one, okay? Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna, I'm gonna use a different marker um, so we can see this a little bit better, is we're going to put this medium here. We're gonna put it exactly where it was the first time when we marked it. Let's get this lined up better. Okay, and now we're gonna put this laser through the medium. Okay, back this up a little bit so we can get it all the way on there. Once it's on there, we're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the light so we can see. We have a few different lines that we can see that are going on. Obviously, we have this first one here, and then we've got the reflective light that is bouncing off at the same angle that it is coming in at, okay? So if we were to draw a line right here, calculate this angle, it should be 45 degrees as well. And as you can see, a faint line through here that appears to be at a different angle than this one right here. Okay, and then it of course comes out and goes back to its normal angle right here. Okay, so how we're gonna determine that angle is we are going to go ahead and draw a line. Now, of course, this isn't the angle that we're looking for right now. What we're trying to find is where this meets it. And just to give you a better idea of this, you can see it coming through right there. So essentially it should be somewhere right here, but we're just gonna make sure with the ruler here. Okay, so light coming through here at this angle. Okay, coming through about right there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move our medium. So if we line this back up right here, we can see that it came out at not on the same line. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn back on the light. Okay. Turn the laser off. Now, what we are going to do is line these up and determine what that angle is right there. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our protractor again. We are going to line this up. Okay, so. Looks like it's coming out right at 32, right there. Okay. You can see that. My hand's not in the way. Okay. Now how we're gonna set this up is the exact same equation that we were doing before. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do, so we know that N1, so the medium of air coming in here is just one. Okay, and we're gonna do sine of this angle, angle one, which we already know and measured was 45. Okay, now that should be equal to whatever the medium is of water, the refraction index of water, times the sine of, you know what? I forgot what it was. Should have been 32. 32, 33. Yep, 30, 
32. Okay. We're going to do 32.5 because it was right in the middle of that. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and pull out our calculator, which is my wife's phone at this time. Okay. Maybe we can see that right here. Okay. And we are going to do 1 sine 45. Okay, so it looks like that one comes out to be 0 0.71 equals, and we're just going to do sine of 32.5, which is 0 0.54 times the refraction index of water, which is what we're trying to calculate right now, which is x. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and divide these. Divide this across, and we find that this 0 0.71 divided by the 0.54, nope, 0.54 equals 1.31, which is what the refraction index for water is. Okay, and we can do this experiment with any sort of medium if we just put it in some sort of glass container where it doesn't obstruct any of the, the light coming through and we can clearly see the light um, come out on the other end and do this experiment to determine the medium or the refraction index of any medium. Okay, now to explain what is happening right here and why it just doesn't go straight through here, we know that this ray is coming in at the speed of light. And what happens is the moment it hits this medium, it now actually slows down a little bit and comes in at a different angle. Now, once it exits again, it can go back at its normal angle, which it should be, if there was a line right here, this would be 45 degrees, okay? However, we see that this angle is much shallower. If the refraction index was less than one, it would actually speed up through the speed of light and come in at another angle somewhere like this. Okay, come down here where it's going faster than it would in, in just air. Okay, so that is Snell's Law in a nutshell. That is how we can determine the refraction index and, um, you know, objects that are underwater, what, where they are actually at in correlation to where we are looking at them, and so on. Okay. Um, that's really all it entails. It's super simple. It is an awesome equation.